Hello friends, I want to show you a cool project. It is an electronic lead screw with a touch screen that can turn your lathe almost a full CNC machine. This is an open source project. It was made by a very talented guy named Maxim. By the way, he also built a mini CNC lathe out of concrete. I will leave links to his channel and project page in the description. In this video, we will look at the assembly and installation of Nano ELS on my lathe. I will show you the flashing process step by step, the problems I had, and the changes I made to the electrical part of the project. Enjoy watching. The parts list shown here, but it does not include things like motors, pulleys and belts. I will tell you which parts I used and I will put the list in the description. The value of this project is that for the price of a simple electronic lead screw, you get many more features like a stepper motor on the x-axis, G-code support for automatic turning and color touch screen and many other things like sphere or cone turning. Before I disassembled the lathe, I should to work with pulleys. I got not a high quality pulley, so they need to be deburred. This pulley will be placed on the spindle stand of the stock gear. It is used to drive the encoder. I reduced the thickness to 9 mm, so it matched the thickness of standard gear, and bore in a hole with a diameter of 28 mm. I made the fit on the spindle 28 mm plus 2 hundredths. I also need to make a KV in this pulley. I decided to use my milling tool for this. This is the pulley I got. Looks good, I think. I centered the pulley and the lathe chuck by the tops of the teeth. This pulley will be installed on stepper motor that drive the carriage. I need to bore an 8 mm hole in it to fit the motor shaft. Other pulley will be installed on the lead screw. I already bored it to 12 mm and now I need to make a K-way. My milling tool cannot fit into this hole, so I had to make a special cutter and cut the K-way by hands. I also needed two brackets. One of them to mount an incremental encoder, and the other one to mount the stepper motor. I decided to order this part from GLC CNC. From this company you can get CNC machined or 3D printed parts. You simply upload your 3D file, pick the material you want, and even add a surface finish if you need. They offer many materials like aluminium, steel, stainless steel and plastics. You can choose exactly what fits your project. I choose anodizing, because it has many color options. I get my custom part here for a good price. GLC CNC can build parts in as fast as 3 days, with delivery to your hands in around 5 to 7 days. Also you can drop the price with the coupons. The part comes in a branded cardboard box. It is well packed in soft material to avoid damage. The part is perfect and meets all expectations. All dimensions and tolerances are correct and surface finish is excellent. I appreciate GLC for sponsoring this project. If you want to order, check the link in the video description. I mounted the motor on this nice bracket and pressed the pulley on. The fit is not very tight, but I still cannot put the pulley on by my hand. I use an EMA 23 stepper motor, model 57HS56. Now I will install the bracket with the motor on the lathe. By the way, here I use HTD 3M pulleys with 30 teeth, 16 mm wide, and a belt with 63 teeth and 189 mm long. As you already noticed, I made elongated holes in the bracket, which allow me to adjust the belt tension. I use an incremental optical encoder with 600 pulses per revolution. I took it apart and saw what's inside. It really is optical. I'm installing it on the bracket. I could have used a plastic bracket here, but it seemed not stiff enough. So I ordered a metal 3D printed bracket from GLC. Now I need to install the pulley on the spindle instead of the standard gear. For some reason I made the pulley 1mm too thin, so I also made a spacer in. At first, I couldn't install the pulley, so I heated it with a regular hair dryer to about 70 degrees Celsius, and then it worked. I installed the other pulleys and adjust the preload in the bearings. In my lathe, there is a set screw to fix the spindle nut. Now I need to install the encoder. I put the pulley on it, put on the belt, and mark the spots for the holes. The encoder pulleys and belt are GT2 standard, 6 mm wide. On the spindle there is a 60-tooth pulley, on the encoder there is a 30-tooth pulley. 
drilling the holes and taping the threads. I will use M5 screws here. Next, I install the encoder in its place and adjust the belt tension. The loads here are small. What's much more important is that the encoder follows the spindle rotation exactly. If the belt is too loose, the encoder could give wrong readings, and I don't want that. I also need to modify the decorative panel, because now the motor gets in the way. For power Nano ELS, I will use the same 16 volt power supply that I use for my milling attachment. The link to the video about making it is in the description. I want to be able to remove the headstock, so I will install an XT30 connector here. I will put a cable tie to make sure the connector does not come apart. I really like using this spiral wrap sleeve everywhere. It helps to keep wires tidy. Here you can see why I made my own motor bracket. I have a rather small headstock and the standard motor bracket would not allow me to install the decorative panel in its normal place. I installed the front panel. I don't need to do anything else inside. I will use a TB6600 driver. I realized that it was a mistake, but more about that later. I won't go into detail about setting the current micro steps or where to connect the wires. There is a lot of information about that, and you can find it in the many other places. I installed the driver on the left side of headstock using double-sided tape. I'll skip the boring part of soldering the wires. Nothing interesting, just connecting everything according to the schematic. It is time to assemble the controller. Since the controller uses a rather expensive display and I am using cheap DC-DC converters to power, I decided to add over-voltage protection. But before installing it, I will test it. The over-voltage protection is a small electronic circuit that quickly cuts off the power if it goes above 5.5 volts. I build a circuit where 5 volts go through the protection board. This is the protection board. This is the DC-DC converter that supplies 5 volts to the protection board. I will suddenly apply 15 volts to the input of the protection board and watch on the oscilloscope how fast the board shuts off the power. I touch the 5 volt line with the high voltage wire. The oscilloscope records the data. Let's take a look. The yellow line is the voltage before the protection board. The green line is the voltage after the protection board. I won't go into deep details. From this data, we can see that the protection board works as expected. The response time was 50 nanoseconds, and the voltage did not go above 5.5 volts. The original design of this controller needs a 5 volt power supply, but I want it to work with a wide voltage range, so I will put a small DC-DC converter and the over voltage protection inside the controller case. I will solder the protection board directly to the DC-DC module. Now I will modify the original PCB a bit. I need to cut all positive traces that go from the power connector. So I have to cut them in two places. Here and here. Maxim, sorry if you are watching this. Then the input of the DC-DC will be soldered to the power connector and the output of the protection board will be soldered to the 5 volt line of the controller. I will cover these cuts with nail polish. I don't have a special coating so this will work fine, I think. Next, we need to check if the ESP module works. We should connect it to the COM port. I plug it into the computer and nothing happens. Here is the problem. Look at this. The connector pins are not soldered to the board. This is the quality of the assembly. Good thing I bought two ESP modules. On the second module, everything is soldered. Let's try this one. But before we can flash the module, we need to install the software. Let's go step by step. The first thing we need to install the Arduino. Open the link, choosing your operation system, and press download. Run the downloaded file and install Arduino. After installation, the IDE will start automatically and install some extra components. It will ask for network access and ask for permission to install the driver. We wait until everything is finished. The line stopped running, probably the installation is finished. Now we need to add a link to the additional boards manager. Go to File, Preferences, copy the link and pass it into the correct field. Click OK. Next, we should install the ESP32 through the boards manager. Go to Tools, Board, Board Manager. Type ESP32 in the search bar and install the package from Espressive Systems. Then we need to install some extra libraries. 
In the menu on the left, open Library Manager. Copy and paste the name of the library into the search field and press Install. Do the same for the WebSockets library. We see the message that the installation was successful. I closed the Arduino IDE, downloaded the Nano ELS H5 repository, and simply opened the H5.ina file with a double click. Now I connect the ESP32 module to the computer. This time the module works correctly. The proper drivers were installed automatically. Next, click Tools, Board, ESP32, and select our device as shown in the manual. Then click Tools, Port, and choose the port where your device appeared. For me, it is COM4. Everything is ready. We can see that correct device on the correct port is detected and ready for flashing. In the top left corner, press the Upload button with the arrow icon, and the compilation and flashing process will begin. The first upload takes quite a long time. For me, it was about 5 minutes. We can see the messages saying that verification process finished successfully. The firmware is uploaded. Next, we simply disconnect the USB cable. Now we know that the ESP module works correctly at first glance, and we can continue assembling the controller. The module is installed on the board like this. You need to check that all three ground pads in the corners match the marks on the board. This makes sure the module is in the correct position. I insert the module into its place and solder all the pins. To be honest, I'm not sure if every pin really needs to be soldered, but I didn't want to spend time checking which ones are unused, so I just soldered all of them. The bus transceiver chips are installed on the opposite side of the board from the ESP module. The correct orientation is marked on the PCB and also by the key on each chip. I soldered them as well. As you can see, the DCDC module with the overvoltage protection and the programming cable are already installed inside the case. I place the connectors into the case, put the PCB on top of them, fix it with screws, and solder the connectors. I clean off the flux, connect the programming cable, and finally install the board into the case. I solder the input of the DC-DC converter to the power connector. I solder the output of the overvoltage protection to the controller's 5 volt power line. Next, I remove the back cover of the display. Be careful here. You also need to disconnect the speaker wire. I connect the display to the controller using the cable that comes with the display. It is important to connect the wires correctly. Obviously, 5 volts and ground must go to the matching pins. But RX and TX must be connected in reverse. TX always go to RX and RX goes to TX. Then I close the case with the display and fasten it using the same screws from the back cover. Now I need to flash the display. I format a microSD card to FAT32. The card must be 32GB or smaller. I copy the file h5.tft from the Nano ELS package into the card. I insert the SD card into the display slot and apply power to the power port. After one second, we see a message on the screen saying that firmware was updated. I disconnect the power, remove the SD card, and power it on again. Everything starts up and works. Perfect. Now I need to configure the firmware for my lathe and flash the ESP one more time. I use an encoder with 600 pulses per revolution and 2 to 1 ratio. So in my case this parameter will be 12 hundreds. The lead screw pitch on my lathe is 2 mm. I set 20 thousands here. I use a quarter micro stepping, so here I set 800. I measure the backlash of the lead screw, and it is about 0.11 mm. That's all the settings. At this stage, I will use only the Z axis feed, so I don't need the other settings. I connect the power to the power port, connect the USB cable, and upload the firmware. I connect the controller to the lathe and turn on the machine. Let's see the result. The first thing to check is the spindle rotation direction, but in my case the spindle angle is not displayed and always shows zero. The stepper motor works, but it skips steps. The spindle angle does not show because I forgot to provide power to the second 5V line, which I cut at the beginning to install the DCDC inside the case. 
I will solder a jumper to supply power to the second part of the board. If you do not modify the board like I did, you will not have this problem. Now the spindle angle is displayed, but it is in the wrong direction. With normal spindle rotation, the angle on the display should increase. In my case, it decreases. To fix this, I need to swap the A and B encoder channels. I just switch the wires in the connector. Now everything works correctly. I played with the modus and found one bad problem. If I make a several paces, the carriage does not reach the final point each time. I reached out to the Maxim about this issue. He tried to repeat the problem on his setup, but he could not see it. Then I looked for the problem on my machine and I think I found it. For some reason, my driver misses one or more steps at the start of the movement. I don't know why this happens. However, if I set micro stepping to 6400 pulses per revolution of the stepper motor, this problem almost disappears. In this case, the movement error is less than 1 micrometer per pass. Conclusion: Don't save on the stepper driver and don't power the system with only 16 volts. That's clearly not enough. Anyway, I like how the system works. I play it with the settings and set a more precise backlash value. There is my settings. I really like how the system works. Even without the cross slide drive, my work on the lathe has become much easier and faster. I can use automatic stop, cut threads with any pitch, including multi start threads, and set any tool feed from 1 micron to 25 mm per revolution. And all of this is done with the press of three buttons, instead of moving and adjusting gears manually. The part you saw at the beginning of the video was made using my milling tool with a 4mm cutter and 8 star thread model with 6mm pitch. Now I regret not installing the motor on the cross feed from the start. After using Nano ELS for some time, I realized that the cross feed motor is absolutely necessary. It can make my work 2 or 3 times faster. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.